Marshall let f of t equal cosine t for t greater than or equal to zero and g of t equal e to the negative t. We're asked to compute the convolution of f and g. Recall the convolution of f of t and g of t is equal to the integral from zero to t of f of tau times g of the quantity t minus tau d tau. However, also recall we can change the order of the convolution and it does not change the result. In our case, it'll work out better if we determine the convolution of g of t and f of t rather than the convolution of f of t and g of t. And since g of t is equal to e to the negative t and f of t is equal to cosine t, the convolution is equal to the integral from zero to t of e to the negative tau times cosine of the quantity t minus tau d tau. And now we need to evaluate the integral. Because this requires integration by parts twice, we will first find the in-depth integral and then come back and evaluate the depth integral where the limits of integration are from zero to t. So again, we first consider the in-depth integral and to perform integration by parts, we will let u equal cosine of the quantity t minus tau and dv equal e to the negative tau d tau. We differentiate to find du and we integrate to find v. du is equal to the derivative of cosine of the quantity t minus tau times d tau, which gives us du equals sine of the quantity t minus tau d tau. We integrate both sides of dv equals e to the power of negative tau d tau to determine v. v is equal to negative e to the power of negative tau. And now we apply the integration by parts formula, which is the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du, where u times v is negative e to the negative tau times cosine of the quantity t minus tau, and then minus the integral of v du becomes plus because v is negative, so we have plus the integral of e to the negative tau times sine of the quantity t minus tau d tau. Notice the integral on the right is no simpler than the original integral, it just has sine instead of cosine, and therefore we now have to apply integration by parts again on the integral of e to the negative tau times sine of the quantity t minus tau d tau. So applying integration by parts a second time, we let u equal sine of the quantity t minus tau and dv equal e to the negative tau d tau. And therefore du is equal to negative cosine of the quantity t minus tau d tau and v is equal to negative e to the negative tau. And now we apply integration by parts again just on the integral on the right. So we still have negative e to the negative tau times cosine of the quantity t minus tau and then plus the integration by parts formula in parentheses where we have u times v which is negative e to the negative tau times sine of the quantity t minus tau minus the integral of e to the negative tau times cosine of the quantity t minus tau d tau. And now we'll clear the parentheses and because we're adding the signs stay the same. And now analyzing our equation notice on the right we have the same integral that we're trying to evaluate on the left except we have minus the integral. So now we'll add the integral of e to the negative tau times cosine of the quantity t minus tau d tau to both sides of the equation. This gives us two times the integral of e to the negative tau times cosine of the quantity t minus tau d tau on the left. On the right we still have negative e to the negative tau cosine of the quantity t minus tau minus e to the negative tau times sine of the quantity t minus tau. That's a lot of taus. And now to solve for the integral on the left we multiply both sides by one half and then because this is an indefinite integral we'll also include a plus c. Now that we have the in-depth integral, we can now evaluate the depth integral and determine the convolution. We'll just ignore the plus c and then determine big F of t minus big F of zero. Let's do this on the next slide. We can go ahead and factor out the one half and now we determine big F of t minus big F of zero. Remember when performing substitution, we perform substitution for tau not t because we integrate it with respect to tau. So for the next step we have one half and then inside the parentheses we have big F of t minus big F of zero. Notice when we substitute t for tau we have negative e to the negative t times cosine zero because we have t minus t inside the parentheses and then minus e to the negative t times sine zero and then minus big F of zero where when we substitute zero for tau we have negative e to the zero cosine t minus e to the negative zero sine t. And now we simplify. Cosine zero is one, sine zero is zero, and e to the zero is one. This gives us one half times the first set of parentheses simplifies to just negative e to the negative t. 
because cosine zero is one and sine zero is zero. And then we have minus, and then in the second set of parentheses, we have negative e to the zero, which is negative one times cosine t, giving us negative cosine t, and then minus one times sine t, or just minus sine t. Clearing the parentheses inside the first set of parentheses, notice we'll have cosine t plus sine t, and then minus e to the negative t. And we still have the factor of one half out front, and therefore the convolution of f and g, which is the same as the convolution of g and f, is equal to one half times the quantity cosine t plus sine t minus e to the negative t. I hope you found this helpful.